while. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. For everyone that is subscribed already, thank you. I really appreciate it. I just hit uh, that 100, 100 subscriber mark, so I'm pretty proud of that. Now, I know that this is a little bit different than what we've been doing with the tractors, but I, I would like you to just check it out. It might be something that you might want to get into. So everyone's kind of looking for a new side hustle these days. A lot of guys are splitting firewood, selling firewood, they're doing the sawmills, but a lot of that equipment is pretty pricey. And um, this is a great option for somebody that doesn't want to do that much labor intensive work and invest that much money into sawmills, trailers, chainsaws, PPE, and all kinds of other equipment. Uh, this machine is very reasonably priced for what it can do. Uh, this is a CNC plasma table, and this machine, all in, for me, was $4,500. Uh, the only reason I say for me is because I already had a, a laptop, which would be the only other thing that you would need. So if you needed a laptop, you might be looking at another $1,000. So you could get this machine for roughly, say, around $5,000, that's with, with the plasma table and the plasma cutter, and you could start cutting signs out of your garage, which there's a huge demand for right now. A lot of people are really into these custom metal signs, whether it's a family tree with their name on it or a custom address, or it could be a business logo. I mean, there's the possibilities are endless with this thing. So just check it out. See if you might like it. It might be something you want, might want to get into. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at this machine and all the requirements as to what it takes to run this thing. It really doesn't take much. Um, so let's go ahead and check it out. All right, here it is. This is the Langmuir Crossfire Pro. It is a CNC plasma machine. You can see the plasma cutter right there. It is a razor cut. It is a 45 amp machine. This is the plasma cutter that they offer with the machine. You can get different plasma cutters for this machine, better plasma cutters like a hypertherm. Um, I just took the easy route, I guess, and went with the plug and play setup. I can cut anything up to quarter inch steel pretty, pretty easily with that machine. So the cut dimensions on this are roughly around 33 inches by 48 inches. That's the size of steel that you can actually cut. The water table here is bigger than that. Uh, but that's the actual cut size. The machine itself is roughly somewhere around five foot by five foot. It doesn't really take up a whole lot of space. I have it on casters so I can wheel this thing around. Um, I have an extension cord that I made there to plug it in. All it requires is a 30 amp 240 volt feed for the 45 amp uh, plasma cutter. There's a ground clamp right there. That ground clamp will clamp onto the steel. Um, pretty similar to how you would use a welder. You'll have another uh, 120 volt cord that you will need to plug in for the plasma controller. You can see the, that is the controller right there that actually controls the, um, all the drive motors, which are right here. Um, the only other thing that this thing really requires is an air compressor. So I have a Husky 30 amp air compressor. It's not the greatest air compressor, but it works pretty well. I, it, it has no problem supplying this machine with what it needs to cut steel continuously. Uh, I don't have to take any breaks or anything like that. I mean, if I have a, a, a cut that's going to take me 15 to 20 minutes, it, it will supply the air no problem to this thing. So that's basically the gist of what this machine requires and, and what it is here. It does have this, uh, this water table that you do have to clean periodically because it'll get pretty gummed up. You can kind of see that there are some, some chunks of old steel that have been cut through there. It gets kind of nasty. There's some drain plugs on the bottom. And then that little shelf right there, I actually added that onto it because the plasma machine used to sit on the floor and I wanted to kind of get everything off the ground. Um, but uh, it's a really nice machine and you can make uh, quite a bit of extra money. You can probably make as much as you want because all the steel sign stuff, the custom stuff, is really in right now. Everybody wants it, and I have trouble keeping up with orders. So it's worth looking into. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of this software to run this thing, and we'll do some cuts. 
All right, I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on this, but I just want you to get, kind of get the gist of it. So this machine uses a program called Fusion 360, so that's where you do all your CAD work and all your design work. That probably is one of the harder parts, is to learn how to use the AutoCAD. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos out on it, that's pretty much how I learned. Um, but anyways, you create your design in Fusion 360, and then you have to create a, a tool path. Um, that's, that's the code that it, that it makes to communicate with the machine in order to cut these pieces out. So I already have this done. Uh, maybe one day I'll make another video going through that whole process. But uh, this is the thing that we're going to cut today. It's just like an infinity heart with the people's names on it. I think it's an, an anniversary gift for somebody. So I've already got the tool pad uh, created. It's kind of hard to see, but um, it, it'll basically show you and you can even simulate the every pierce and, and the path that your torch head will take to cut this piece. So that's that. Um, okay, so here we are in fire control. And in order for it to be usable, we have to actually hook it up to the controller on the, on the uh, plasma table. So there's just a USB cord that hooks up to the controller, and we just plug it in, and then this thing will come live where we can actually uh, communicate with the machine. There it goes. So now, I'm going to open up the file that I just showed you on the Fusion 360 program. Which this part's kind of confusing, but we're not going to get into a lot of detail on this. I just want to show you uh, somewhat of the process. So here is the part that we just talked about. Maybe it's easier to see. So there it is. You can kind of see the blue line with the tool path on it. And um, all we basically have to do is get the torch head set up on the, uh, the right axis that we want, the, the zero axis and then we just hit the start button and it starts cutting. So we'll go ahead and move this thing around, get it set up, and we'll start to cut. All right, so we've got the airline hooked up, and we've got our ground clamp hooked up in the back corner here. The plasma cutter is on, which is important. So I've got the x-axis set here to zero. We're gonna go ahead and start this cut now.
Okay, we got everything cut. I ended up cutting um, four different signs, and then I also cut some mounting tabs that I use on some of these. Uh, you saw me cut the Infinity Heart sign and the Crown Point baseball one here. I also cut another one. It's a uh, it's a bulldog. It's kind of hard to see it once once it's painted. It'll be easier to kind of see what it is. And then I also did this Jeep one here. So now I want to show you the process of cleaning these things up after they're cut because it's not a laser machine, so there is going to be a little bit of cleanup on these things. And I'll get a closer shot of it. Um, but there's what's called dross on the back of these. So where the torch blows through on the back side, uh, it's got like little puddles of steel that are on the back. A lot of them just kind of chip off, but you still need to kind of grind them a little bit as well, just to smooth them out so there's no sharp edges. So here's one of the tools I use for this. Uh, this thing is the best money I spent. This is a must have if you're doing this kind of work. It's a Milwaukee M12 uh, die grinder with a little two inch wheel on it. And uh, you can just untwist these things. And I got a little flapper disc wheel that I use on them. And you can get them in different grits. And you just twist the new one on. I buy these in the bags. Uh, I burn through a lot of these little flapper discs. But these allow you to really get into some of those tight spaces and clean up all those edges. Sometimes I'll even use a palm sander. Uh, this is just a, a cordless 20 volt DeWalt palm sander I got. It's pretty nice and uh, I'll use that on the front side of it. There's like a little bit of burrs on the front sometimes and I'll just use this and kind of go over the front of it just to get it all smoothed out before I paint it. Um, I'll throw a link for both of these tools in the description below. The other thing I like to use is this, uh, I think it's a four inch like cold chisel. It's like a masonry chisel. But I'll use this on the back side and I'll just kind of brush it across the steel and it, and it knocks a lot of those burrs off. Um, I'll always run this through first. It, it, it gets all those big chunks off before you start using that grinder. Um, and that's about it. So we'll go ahead and deburr all these things and get them cleaned up. And then uh, I'll weld these little tabs on that I make and show you the finished product. Okay, here I got a little five inch vice break from Kaka, or Keka. I don't know how the hell you say it. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I got this on Amazon. I don't remember how much it was. Just a cheap little, just a cheap little break to kind of get you buying some small things that you might need. But you can just see it just clamps in your vice. So, I'll open this thing up. It's just magnetic. Kind of see what it does there. It works okay for little stuff, so um, we're gonna go ahead and bend these little tabs that I made on the plasma machine. We're gonna put a little 90 degree bend in those so we can weld them onto the back of these signs we just cut. All right, hopefully you can see this thing in action. 
Actually, I don't know if you could see. I scored a little line on there. So I could put that blade of the, the finger brake right on that thing. All right, there you see. Nice clean little break. Okay, that's all of them. We got eight of them here. So I'll get the signs all marked out and we can tack them on and all we gotta do is paint it. There you can see we got our little tabs welded on. So with those tabs, they could put a screw in the wall and hang it on there and they're gonna have like a half of an inch gap between the wall just so it gives it uh, just a little bit, a little bit more character to the sign I guess than just laying flat on the drywall. All right, there it is all done. I got those floating tabs on there. You can see it's kind of floating off the wall about a half an inch. I think it looks pretty good like that versus just sitting flat. Uh, this sign's 32 inches wide. I charged the guy $140 for this sign. He was kind of a pain to deal with. Now, I just paint these things with spray paint, uh, just flat black paint. If someone wants them custom painted, they can do that on their own. I tell them I'm not a paint shop. Uh, this crown point sign was two foot by two foot approximately. Uh, same with the next one, two foot in diameter. Uh, I charged the guy $100 for these signs, $100 each. Uh, normally I would charge $120 to $130 for these, but he's a guy I work with, so I gave him a little bit better of a deal. The next one, the Jeep sign, was actually for my dad. Uh, that was a freebie, but I have the file now, so if someone wanted this, I can cut it pretty quickly, and I'd probably charge him, if it was two foot, I'd probably charge him 80 or 90 bucks for that sign. So. Altogether, I made about 350 bucks on all these signs. It cost me about $50 in steel, and it took me probably about eight hours worth of time to do all these with the design. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keystone.